Yo, James D. Buzzard and the Sony ZV-E10 was just announced and everybody is super hyped about this camera. If you guys are anything like me, you guys have probably been watching every single review of everybody who has gotten this camera in their hands and um, you guys are probably trying to make an educated buying decision on if this camera is going to be right for you and you're probably thinking how does this camera exactly fit in the sony lineup so today i want to give you guys my initial thoughts on the sony zv e10 now this is the sony zv1 that i've actually been shooting on since june of last year this has been an amazing camera but how exactly does the uh, Sony ZV-E10 stack up against this camera that I've been loving for the past uh, over a year now? And how does it fit into the rest of the Sony lineup out of all the cameras that are currently available through Sony? And there's a ton of cameras that are available from Sony. So we'll touch on that in this video. First, let's go over all of the basic uh, specs of the Sony ZV-E10 what this camera offers and why everybody is so hyped about this camera. This camera offers that same exact super familiar Sony layout that we're all really familiar with at this point. Whether you guys own a Sony camera or not, you guys probably are pretty familiar with how Sony lays out all their buttons and all that kind of stuff on their A6000 and their smaller camera line. And the ZV-E10 is extremely similar to all of those other cameras. Cameras. Back wise, it has 24 and 30 frames per second in 4K, just like all of the other Sony cameras. And overall, it's a really good image that you guys are gonna get out of the Sony ZV-E10. Even if we just base it on what we know from all the cameras that had the exact same sensor that the Sony ZV-E10 has, like the Sony A6000 all the way through the Sony A6600. Other than that, we also know that it will have up to 120 frames per second in 1080p. Awesome autofocus, just like the Sony ZV-1, just like the Sony A6600, um, the Sony A7C, it'll have awesome autofocus with eye tracking in video. It will uh, film in 6K and down sample to 4K like a lot of other Sony cameras. That feature allows for that clear image zoom function, which is why all the Sonys, you can actually have clear image zoom where you have pretty much lossless quality when you guys are zooming all the way to uh, uh, 1.5X, which is awesome to have if you guys need to punch in just a little bit more to get that shot. It also has that extremely customizable button layout. So you can pretty much customize all programmable buttons in this camera so that the camera really works exactly how that how you guys want it to and it doesn't have to stay exactly how it came from the manufacturer another thing it actually shoots 11 frames per second um in raw which is the exact same as all the other uh, Sony A6000 line cameras. So photo wise, you're gonna get the that exact same quality that you would be getting from all of the other A6000 cameras. All of those cameras take awesomely good pictures um, and I don't think you're really losing that much on uh, those crop sensor cameras for pictures especially for content that's going to be living online. On top of all of those standard kind of Sony features that we're all really familiar with it also has all of those awesome features that the ZV-1 came with including the active track stabilization, a huge record button right on top, um, that big record button on top is something Sony's doing on a lot of their newer cameras. And then it also has the all the uh, new kind of shooting modes like product showcase. Um, it also has the background defocus, which is kind of an auto exposure mode. Um, that's an awesome thing to have, especially if you guys are just getting into content creation or if you guys are filming yourself, it's also sometimes convenient just to have that quick background defocus um, if you're walking and talking and doing a vlog type content. And then it also even has beauty mode, which is great for beauty uh, vloggers or people that are making beauty type content or just anybody that wants to kind of improve their overall kind of skin complexion the way it comes across 
on video. You can actually do that right in camera, just like you can with the Sony ZV-1. I personally don't use that feature, but if you're anything like my boy Sam over on a Potato Jets channel, you guys can check out his video and see how Sam looks with that beauty filter turned on. And I must say he looked pretty good. What are you talking about though? You look beautiful. No, my skin is beautiful as it is, all caramel. So he went over all the features that are typically found in the Sony a6000 line and we went over all the the common features that it shares with the Sony ZV-1 or at least the standout features to me. So why is everybody so hyped about the Sony ZV-E10? And that's because it offers a few features over the Sony ZV-1 that everybody complained about with the Sony ZV-1 when it was first released starting with the fact that the Sony ZV-1 did not have an interchangeable lens or a lens wider than 24 uh, millimeters equivalent. Everybody complained that when you held it out in front of you, you couldn't quite get the uh, field of view that you guys wanted. It wasn't quite wide enough to fit you in the frame um, comfortably. There are some workarounds with that, which we'll get to later on in this video, but uh, the new Sony ZV-E10, you guys are actually going to be able to change lenses. So kind of picture this as the Sony ZV-E10. I know you guys can actually see it in other videos, but just for the sake of, you know, demonstration, this camera would just be a little bit bigger than this overall, which this is a very small package to be shooting with the quality that the Sony ZV-E10 will shoot with. So I think that is gonna be an amazing new feature. We can put the 10 to 18 on there. We can put the new Sony 14 millimeter on there. We can put this 85 millimeter G lens on there. We can put the uh, 24 to 105 on there. We could even put a 35 millimeter 1.5 for G Master on the new Sony ZV-E10. And this is going to be epically sick for just being able to really get the compositions that you guys want and uh, not be stuck in that 24 to 70 millimeter um, focal range like you are with the Sony ZV-1. Now, to go along with the fact that it has interchangeable lenses, it also, like we already talked about, has the exact same sensor as the Sony A6000, the Sony A6100, the A6300, 65, 66, all of the A6000 line, it has the exact same sensor. So we can expect the exact same overall image quality with this new Sony ZV-E10, which is going to be amazing because that is another thing that some people complained about was the overall image quality of the Sony ZV-1 was not quite where they wanted it to be. For me and my purposes, I think the Sony ZV-1 is an amazing camera and is very capable of online content creation. Moving on from that, it also has USB-C charging. This camera only charges via micro USB, which for me personally, I've never had an issue uh, running this camera with a external power bank or something like that, but the Sony ZV-E10 will offer that USB-C charging. With that USB-C charging, we also have a bigger battery that will be capable of charging at the exact same time that you guys are running the camera. So not only will the uh, camera be able to run and live stream and stuff like that indefinitely using the USB-C, but um, you can also charge your battery at the same time. It also has that headphone jack so that you guys can start using a camera like this professionally for interviews and documentary style filmmaking where you guys may need to actually monitor your guys' audio. Now, along with all of those, it also has the ability to live stream directly from that USB-C cable uh, without any software and without a capture card. So that's gonna be amazing for anybody that travels and live streams or anybody that just wants to overall simplify their live streaming setup. This camera will allow you guys to do that. And again, with the fact that you can interchange your guys' lenses, you guys can throw something like the Sigma 16 millimeter 1.4 onto the new Sony ZV-E10, and that would be an awesome, awesome, like, studio-type uh, camera or setup 
um, for YouTube and for overall content creation. And you guys could do a lot of paid work even with a simple setup like that. There's no doubt in my mind that the Sony ZV-E10 is going to be an amazing, amazing camera, especially for people that are looking to take their content creation a little bit more seriously and maybe even do some paid work or just start getting their foot in the door with potential new clients or people that maybe you could do paid work for in the future. The new Sony ZV-E10 is going to uh, have that image, overall image quality with the larger sensor and all of that to really uh, feel confident in doing professional and paid work with it, especially if you guys are just starting out. But with all of that being said, there are a few reasons where I think that the Sony ZV-1 might be a better buying option for a lot of people that are looking at the Sony ZV-10. And a few reasons I think people would really benefit from the Sony ZV-1 versus the ZV-E10 are the fact that this camera is so easy to use. You can literally take it out of your pocket flip the screen out, and by the time the screen's out, you're already ready to record. So the fact that this camera only has a one lens built into the body, it closes down this small, and it just is in an overall extremely small package that you can physically put into your pocket, um, makes this camera an extremely valuable tool to content creators because you guys can create content anywhere. You guys can take this to concerts without getting needing to get some sort of permit or p permission ahead of time or having some kind of, uh, you know, a uh, press badge on you or something like that. You guys can walk into a concert, get great looking footage with this tiny little camera and it literally fits in your pocket and is extremely easy to use no matter what your kind of uh, skill level is with the camera. This camera makes it extremely easy uh, just like the ZV-E10 will. Um, but uh, moving on to our second Second reason why I think the ZV-1 um, is a little better than the Sony ZV-E10 is that overall return on investment. I think the people that are really uh, uh, gonna be looking at this camera or the people that Sony are marketing this camera to are people that are beginner uh, filmmakers or beginner content creators or people that are still a little bit budget conscious when it comes to their overall camera setup. What can you guys get quality wise for what price? I think the ZV-E10 is going to be an amazing value, but for some people who only want to get a camera and be done with it, I think this is gonna be the better buy. We're gonna talk about the lenses next, but as far as the return on investment, you can get this camera right now for $750 uh, MSRP price. I've seen it on sale for as cheap as $650, and I actually got mine brand new in an open box for $620. It had all the accessories, not a flaw with it, and um, I got it for 620 bucks, and that was literally less than a month after the pre-sale of this camera. So the overall return on investment for the Sony ZV-1 is huge, especially for me that bought this camera to make content for myself. I bought this camera for live streaming. I bought this camera to run out with my daughter and take pictures. I bought this camera to make YouTube content. I bought this camera as a third uh, camera angle, maybe stuff like an overhead camera angle. That's what I really intended to buy this camera for, was to get me more making content for myself. And I think if you guys are in the situation of looking to make content quick and easy for yourself, by simplifying yourself in the overall camera system that you guys get can lead you to make more content. And I think instead of you know sitting on the couch or uh, looking around online for accessories, which I know I'm gonna end up doing for the Sony ZV-E10, such as lenses, whatever else you guys are gonna end up wanting to buy for it, this Sony ZV-1 is literally you buy it and you're done. So I think the return on investment for this camera is huge, especially if you guys are a beginner content creator, a beginner filmmaker, a beginner photographer, 
anybody that's looking for their very first camera, the return on investment is huge. You wanna get content out and you don't wanna spend uh, money that you potentially don't have yet on uh, just you know trying to get a camera system together so that you can do what you want with it. That was a long one. And moving on to our third biggest reason that the Sony ZV-1 may be a better option for you is to kind of go along with reason number two in that return on investment. And that is the kit lens that comes on the Sony ZV-1. The Sony ZV-1 actually comes with a surprisingly good kit lens. Now, on my Sony ZV-1, I actually have a black ProMist filter. It is the quarter inch filter. I almost have this on all the time, unless I'm shooting in like extreme backlit sun type situations. It just depends on the situation. But I end up having this black ProMist on here all the time, and I don't use the built-in beauty function because the black ProMist actually does a little bit of that for me. So, um, so that's one of the biggest reasons I love having the black ProMist on there is to take off that digital edge that a lot of newer cameras have these days, no matter if it's a point and shoot or something with a new, newer modern lens. Um, but anyways, uh, the lens on this camera is awesome. I have no issues with the lens on this camera. I could definitely see myself breaking it if you dropped it on the lens or something like that. And I have seen a video online where somebody had like, they showed it in their video, but somebody had like a super bent Sony ZV-1 lens and they had to send it into Sony to get repaired and all that. Uh, so you... This lens does have positives and negatives to it. If it breaks, you need to send the whole system in to Sony to get it fixed. But as far as this lens goes, on paper, this is a 24 to 70 millimeter equivalent f1.8 to f2.8 lens or Zeiss lens that's on the Sony ZV-1. Now, everybody always forgets about this and never talks about this. Sony advertises this lens as a 24 to 70 equivalent f1.8 to f2.8. So they actually don't give you the equivalent aperture or the equivalent f-stop of this lens. So the Sony ZV-1 actually has an f4.8 to 7.6 uh, aperture when you guys actually multiply the f-stop that Sony gives you by 2.7 which is the crop factor of this lens. Now the kit lens that comes on the Sony ZV-E10. If you guys are only planning on getting the kit lens and trying to be one and done with your Sony ZV-E10, the Sony ZV-E10 is advertised as a 16 to 50 millimeter lens which means that you still need to actually multiply that uh, focal length or that focal range by 1.5, which is the crop factor of that lens. So once you do that, you actually get a 24 to 75 millimeter lens uh, that you guys are actually going to get as the kit lens on your Sony ZV-E10. So with that being said, we also need to multiply the f-stop that that lens is by the crop factor of the Sony ZV-E10. So we're gonna multiply f3.5 to f5.6 by 1.5 or by the crop factor of the Sony ZV-E10. Once you guys actually multiply the f-stop of that lens by the crop factor, you guys are gonna get f5.25 to f 8.4. Comparing that directly, I'll try to put these on screen. Comparing those directly, the Sony ZV-1 is f4.8 to f7.6 equivalent, and the Sony ZV-E10 is an f5.2 to f8.4 equivalent, which means that the Sony ZV-1 is actually going to give you a shallower depth of field than the new Sony ZV-E10 with the kit lens that comes with the Sony ZV-E10. So if you guys are only buying one lens for your Sony ZV-E10, 
you guys might be better off going with something like the Sony ZV-1 uh, for your guys' first camera for content creation or for your guys' third or fourth camera for content creation or you know, definitely keep this camera in your lineup because um, this camera is extremely easy to use. And like I said, the lens that comes on here is phenomenal. Definitely impressive for a tiny little point and shoot camera. Moving on from the lens that comes on the Sony ZV-1, um, is actually the rolling shutter on the brand new Sony ZV-E10. Now, I know everybody here has seen Gerald Undone's video, but if you guys go back to Gerald Undone's video, you guys can see how distracting the overall rolling shutter is in the back of his image. I actually do remember when I was shooting on my Sony A6400, that was my B camera for weddings, um, for interviews, for anything that I needed needed a two camera setup for. I was using, when I very first got started, the Sony a6400 um, professionally for a ton, ton, ton of work. But I remember when I was trying to put it on a gimbal, how distracting that image can look depending on what movements you're doing with your gimbal. It was fine for push-ins, push-outs, stuff like that for the most part, but if you're doing any kind of left and right panning, um, just there was a lot of movement in the background that was just, you know, you really see stuff really kind of going because of that slow sensor readout on the Sony ZV-E10 and the entire Sony A6000 line. So that is one thing to think about is how are you guys going to be using the Sony ZV-E10 and check out the rolling shutter in the people's videos that have already gotten this camera. And just so you guys can kind of see for yourself, is that acceptable or not? That rolling shutter is undeniably noticeable and terrible. The Sony ZV-1 does not have that rolling shutter issue like the entire Sony A6000 line. Moving on though from the uh, actual rolling shutter, we're actually gonna talk about the shutter speed of the Sony ZV-1. The Sony ZV-1 has a 32,000 uh, one over 32,000 shutter, which means that you guys can actually shoot in extremely, extremely bright situations. Um, but additionally, the Sony ZV-1 has a built-in ND filter. So between the ND filter and that awesome high shutter speed that you guys can get on the Sony ZV-1, you guys can shoot in extremely bright sunlight conditions without needing to actually throw an additional ND filter on your camera. Ignoring the 180 degree rule, you guys are still going to be able to get a good exposure, at least to be able to capture that footage, which with content creation, it's not always about the image quality. Sometimes it's it's a combination of the image, the audio. There's a lot more that goes into content creation than just having the best overall image. Um, this content creation is a lot different than film making. Um, they're two beasts in themselves. And um, I think content creators, a lot of them are going to be more than happy with all of the features that are packed into this tiny little ZV-1. And if you guys don't wanna wait a month or so to get a Sony ZV-E10 in your hands, then I can highly suggest to pick this up today. Pick the Sony ZV-1 up now. If you guys are considering a camera out of the Sony A6000 line and you are not a photo-centric content creator, get the Sony ZV-1 now. Stop waiting and making excuses about making content and pick up a ca ca camera now, whether it is the Sony ZV-1 or it's a camera from five years ago that's 200 bucks and fits in your budget, but you guys can get to making content. A lot of what you guys do in content creation happens back here. It happens on the computer. It's not happening so much in the computer. Of course you need the footage to be able to play with it and do what you need to do on the computer, but check out some of the videos that go viral online. Those don't always have the best image quality. Sometimes it's just about what story you guys are telling that a lot of the times is what's most important. So let's talk about the Sony ZV-E10. Who is this camera for? 
who would I recommend this camera to be for uh, from doing all the research on this camera and um, comparing it up against the Sony ZV-1 that I've been shooting with for so long now. I think the Sony ZV-E10 is going to be amazing for committed uh, content creators, people that are need to film documentary style content for themselves or they're just getting into actually uh, doing uh, content creation at a paid level. The new Sony ZV-E10 is going to be an amazing camera for those people. Additionally, I think that this new camera is going to be amazing for anybody already in the Sony ecosystem who's looking um, for an additional camera to add to their kit. If you guys are shooting on something like the Sony FX3, you already have lenses and you guys are just looking for that second camera angle, something for overhead shots, something for um, those interviews that you guys need that second uh, camera angle, something to put on a slider, something to put on a gimbal. This new Sony ZV-E10 is going to be amazing for people already in the Sony ecosystem and already have invested in all of the equipment and gear that goes in to the Sony ecosystem. I also think that this camera is going to be amazing for people who loved the ZV-1, but maybe you guys held off, or maybe you guys already got the ZV-1, but you guys were really hoping for a camera outside of that 18 to 70 millimeter focal range. And the reason I say 18 millimeters is because you guys can get a wide angle adapter for this camera that actually makes it go from uh, 24 millimeters to roughly 18 millimeters depending on if you have active uh, track stabilization on or not. This camera is awesome for people that are really looking to only stick in that 18 to 70 millimeter range, but anybody outside of that, you guys are definitely gonna be wishing, uh, even if you guys do have this camera, you guys are gonna be wishing that you guys had something different if that is your guys' needs. People that need that 10 to 18, people that need that 70 to 200, um, but want to stay as light and small as possible with their overall camera package. And I would still recommend getting the Sony ZV-E10 with the kit lens, whether you guys are deciding to use it or not, because of the fact that that thing is going to be so small and convenient to use, that's the reason I wouldn't pass it up for that extra $99 or $100 um, cost to get that extra kit lens with your camera. And if you break the kit lens, who cares? It's 100 bucks, that could be your run and gun, go out with the family type lens to use. Um, I do find myself using my Sony ZV-1 quite a bit just when I'm going out grabbing ice cream or whatever with the fam. Did you guys upgrade to the Sony ZV-E10? I think that this camera is going to be amazing again for a lot of people. If you guys have an older camera, anything A6500 and older, even something like the A7 III, I think the new Sony ZV-E10 with all the new capabilities with Catalyst Browse, Active Track Stabilization, Product Showcase. These are all gonna be amazing features for content creators, people looking to make online content, whether it's for yourself or paid for other people. Um, the Sony ZV-E10, I think, is going to get that job done. So either way, guys, I am extremely, extremely excited to actually get the Sony ZV-E10 in my hands, but I have a little secret. I'm going to be waiting to get the Sony ZV-E10. I'm gonna wait till the hype dies down a little bit. Once the hype dies down, there are going to be hella returns on all of those people that pre-ordered. There's gonna be a few out of those people that pre-ordered that are gonna end up returning those. And that is where I am gonna swoop in, pick up my Sony ZV-E10 for a discounted price on an open box, and uh, I'll be extremely happy. And then I'll be able to sell my Sony ZV-1 as long as everything. I love everything about the new Sony ZV-E10. And we may even think about selling the Sony A A7C. Lately, I've just been trying to get rid of all my extra gear. I got literally a table over there of extra gear that I really want to get rid of. I don't know what to do with it yet. Um, 
maybe a small giveaway. I don't, I don't really know yet. But anyways, let me know your guys' thoughts on the new Sony ZV-E10. Do you guys love it? Do you guys hate it? What are some of the standout features that you guys like? And would you guys get it over the Sony ZV-1? Or is the Sony ZV-1 all you guys need to create content? That's all I had for today. I'm gonna leave it at that for this one. I will see you guys in the next video. Peace. My girlfriend braided my hair up for me. I'm not used to it yet, but. Be real sexy. That's for sure. <laughs> Anyways. Google, turn off the camera.